At the table, we have Director of Athletics Rick Hart and President R. Gerald Turner. Uh, Rick will begin with an opening statement. Yes, I will. Just as soon as I can find it. Stubborn pocket. <laughs> okay. Well, again, thank, thank you all for coming, especially on short notice. Uh, I think you all have seen the release that we issued, but I do want to just hit a, a few highlights from that to reiterate with everybody uh, some of the things that we're here to, to discuss this afternoon. Uh, first of all, uh, I do want to let everyone know that June Jones has resigned his position as head football coach at SMU. And uh, it wasn't a decision that he reached easily but it was one that he felt and uh, we agreed was best for him uh, and for SMU. Uh, the associate head coach and defensive coordinator, Tom Mason, is going to take over in an interim role. And uh, so we're pleased that he's agreed to do that and will lead our team the rest of the season. Uh, many of you know this, but it has to be said. I mean, Coach Jones was one of the most influential people on the hilltop since the program was reinstated in 1989. Uh, he did a tremendous job. When you think about where SMU was before his arrival in the quarter of a century uh, that we were dormant as it relates to on the field success and what he was able to do uh, to build our program and to take us to uh, four consecutive bowl games and win three bowl championships and produce NFL caliber players and so on is really just incredible, and I can't overstate uh, his importance to reestablishing SMU on the national scene. His decision to resign was his own. Uh, I want to reiterate that, and we certainly, again, are appreciative of all the contributions he made to our program. Right now, we're committed to giving Coach Mason and the staff and our student athletes our best the rest of the season. As you can imagine, when we talked to the team earlier today, they were surprised and saddened. Uh, they gave Coach Jones a standing ovation, and uh, very deservedly so. It was very emotional. But I know that they'll be ready uh, to go and, and to prepare and to get back out to practice tomorrow. And uh, we're asking at this time as well that all the Mustang Nation pull together and really provide them with the support that they deserve these last 10 games of the season. At the appropriate time, we will conduct a national search for the next head football coach at SMU. Uh, there's no urgency to get that process underway, uh, but we'll certainly do that the right way at the right time, and we'll be looking for a coach that shares our vision to be the best football program in our conference, to do things the right way, and to share our values and the educational mission of the university. And just as our university aspires to greatness, again, that's our vision as well. We have a lot of assets here that we want to leverage and promote. Uh, again, we think we can be the best. And one of those assets is the support that we receive from our leadership, and in particular, President Turner and the Board of Trustees. Um, it's unbelievably powerful when you know you have support from the very top. And so at this time, I want to turn it over to President Turner for a few remarks as well. Thank you, Rick. And uh, I, too, want to thank June Jones for the leadership he provided to the team and and really for what he did within DISD. Uh, not many people know how much uh, he contributed to the development of young men that he thought uh, were at risk and that he wanted to make sure had a chance to uh, not only go to high school but perhaps play athletics but uh, not necessarily. Uh, and his uh, really his posture relative to the educational mission of the university was always a very strong one. <clears throat> and he was very visible on campus at university-wide events and at things that uh, involved the faculty and the staff uh, and others. So he was a, a great university citizen uh, as well as a football coach. And I don't think anybody will ever forget the excitement of uh, going to Hawaii and being a big underdog and then uh, winning that game so decisively against the University of Nevada, Reno. They remember it. And uh, we do too. Uh, but it was one of those great uh, comebacks that I think all of us uh, were hoping for and certainly 
uh, we enjoyed them in going to four bowls during those six years. Uh, we wish June the very best. Uh, you can't know June and not like him. He's never lost a friend he ever made anywhere in his whole 60 years. Uh, and I think that's why so many people uh, have felt so strongly about uh, his time here and wanted to come and be supportive of it and then are being very supportive of him now. Uh, we will, as Rick said, uh, be getting underway with a, a search at the appropriate time. But right now, what is at hand is to make sure that uh, Tom Mason and the coaches and the players uh, have all the support that they can have uh, during this transition period. Uh, I think whenever you go, whenever you're in administration or in a position of importance, you always want to know that uh, uh, when you leave something, that uh, something's been achieved and it's better than when you found it. And certainly we can say that with June because like I said, four bowls in six years, uh, we just hadn't done uh, in a very, very long time. And so we thank him for it and wish him the very best. And obviously we'll be talking with him um, as he does uh, decide where he goes next. But uh, uh, we're very grateful for what he provided SMU uh, during his six years here. So this time, if anyone has any questions, I have a microphone. If you're going to ask a question, just let me know, and I'll bring it over to you. Rick, is there a chance that uh, that uh, Tom Mason can keep the job? Is how's the, how is that left to him, or is it for sure going to be somebody else at the end of the year? No, no decisions have been made, Bill. So nothing's for sure. It'll be a national search, and everyone will be considered. In the press release, it mentioned some personal issues. How much did those personal issues affect the on-field performance of the, the team this year? Uh, I'm not certain how to quantify that. You know, only only that uh, that was something June decided he needed to focus on. That it was at least impacting. He felt his ability to provide his best to the team, and so uh, again, we were going to respect that. And uh, and as June does, you know, he's going to think about SMU and others, and which is what he did in this case. Uh, when you um, you hired a recent basketball coach, you went after a, a marquee name. Obviously, June Jones was a marquee name at the time. How much of that do you think will translate into success, and is that a priority for you when you hire the next football coach? You want I, to think, start, all right. I think, uh, since I was here for both of yeah. those, uh, certainly uh, when you start a search, you want to get the best person uh, available. And... Uh, and there are many times you do searches and that individuals you might be interested in are simply not available, they're tied up. And so a lot of it depends upon who is, is willing to be considered. And uh, June was at a time in Hawaii that uh, he was interested in looking somewhere else. And he, had he wanted to go to a private school and he had identified SMU among three or four that might be possible for him someday. Uh, interestingly enough, Larry Brown was in the same situation, and so both of them uh, contacted us. And uh, so I'd like to say, you know, we absolutely put on a great net and found them, but the truth of the matter is, the act, in, in most searches, whether it's athletics, faculty, or for vice presidents and deans, uh, you make it visible enough, you try to make sure people understand what the opportunities are. You have a consultant that calls a lot of people, I mean a lot of people, and there'll be a lot of coaches called by whoever we hire as a consultant, I can assure you. And some are available and some are not. And so what we want is the best one, whether it's somebody who has a great deal of experience or somebody who may be a lot younger but has been very successful in wherever he's been. And so you look for the best person. And I know Rick has been involved in this uh, also uh, many a time, and so it's it's never an easy process, and it's one that doesn't have a foregone conclusion. But I think what Rick said is that Tom Mason would be a part of it if he wants to be a part of it, but then you see who's there and who you can talk into being interested and who themselves are at that point in their career or their family or whatever else that they'd be willing to move. When the Texas Rangers made an announcement like this a couple of weeks ago, they said they were not surprised at all that they had been having discussions with their manager before he stepped down. Were you caught off guard at all by Coach Jones saying personal reasons he was going to step down? Uh, when he first 
broached the subject with me, you know, I wasn't aware of the degree or the level of um, impact that that might have been having on them. And so, you know, I, I think that was initially uh, a bit of a surprise. But since that time, you know, as we talked, obviously, um, and I came to better understand, you know, uh, what was going on, then, you know, it, it was easier to, to understand why he was making this decision when he was. I think that's one of the things that uh, I wish had worked out differently what is the timing. And by that I simply mean, you know, he deserves better than I believe to step down, you know, after, the, after our previous two performances. I would have liked it if he could have uh, gone out a winner because he's a winner and he's, he's demonstrated during his time at SMU that he's a winner. And, and I just hate that the timing of it is such that he wasn't able to do that. When it comes to June and, and academic standards and trying to ease him to the level he wanted, were you guys able to give him everything he wanted or needed? Or, or, or did it come to a point to where you guys couldn't reach an agreement with that? And how will that affect the next coach that you try and get in here? Well, I've been here, this is my third season, so I can only speak to that window of time. But, you know, uh, we're very pleased and feel like our support services, is, is that's what you're getting at, you know, are on par with the industry standard that we are providing adequate support to all of our student athletes, all of our students. And so, you know, that played no role in, in Coach Jones' decision. And uh, we feel very good. Again, I mentioned generally the assets that we have, but we consider that among the, the many assets that we have that when it's time to talk to people about this opportunity that they'll see as a positive. We, uh, during June's time, I think at the beginning, it wasn't the same level as it would have been now when he first got here. We've created, through the help of uh, a number of donors, the academic ADSA, Academic Development of Student Athletes. Uh, I think, I know when we were recruiting for basketball, we showed the top three or four uh, basketball candidates. The list of student athletes that had been admitted for football and basketball in the previous two years. And, uh, and uh, that made it clear to them that uh, there's a lot of hangover about times past, but right now we're competitive and we have the support services that are competitive. Now, can we have more support services? If, if the P5 and the richest schools in America say they want to add more support services, well then, yeah, you can always add more. But I think ours are effective and our student, I mean, our APR scores show that they are. You said that you'll do a national search and find the best candidate to meet a list of criteria. Will that list of criteria be different than the list you used seven years ago when you ended up hiring Coach Jones? Uh, I'll let Rick talk to the current criteria, but I can't imagine that they'd be much different. I mean, there's a little bit of, of history that is different, and that is uh, June was coming in on about five years of really rough, one after another after another. I think Mike Cavins' year where we'd had one winning year since the death penalty, and so June was coming in behind that. Uh, June being June, knew he could do something about it. <laughs> you know, a lot of people would be intimidated by it. He was, he was challenged by it. And, uh, and he, he said, you know, what I, I want to turn one around. And so that attracted him. Uh, now, I think the advantage is people know that you can win here. And some of the things that Joe mentioned and, and others, I think, would ensure them, encourage them even more. So again, whether it's a name coach or one that's up and coming, uh, there's certain things they're going to have to do, and uh, that's defined by who they report to. Yeah, I think if you're asking about the qualities, they're going to be similar. I mean, you could probably write them down on a piece of paper as well as I could, you know, and it, it's an imperfect process, okay? But I think one of the major differences is the quality of the pool that we expect to attract because June made this a good job. You know, I mentioned in my statement that he influenced and shaped our department in ways that benefit all sports, not just football. And so a lot of that groundwork has been laid, a lot of progress has been made to invest in our competitive success, and people are going to see that. And, you know, you can't go create Dallas just anywhere, and you can't go create a top 60 university just anywhere, and you can't go create uh, a beautiful campus just anywhere, and the facilities, you know, all the assets that I, that I alluded to. So we feel like, in large part, because of June and his impact and, and the progress our program has made under his leadership, 
that this is a, a great job and that there'll be a great deal of interest and that we ought to expect to attract some of the best coaches uh, that are available. Anything else? Just to clarify the timeline, you said you were surprised when, when you first had a discussion with June. When did that take place and then everything that has happened since then? Yeah, I, you know, not that I don't want to go into specifics because I do think some of that is private and personal, but I will tell you <laughs> It was, you know, prior to, again, uh, the last, you know, couple of events uh, in terms of our, our outcomes of our games. And so you had, you know, you had a situation where this isn't, by him, uh, a reaction or an overreaction to an outcome. It's something that he had been contemplating and dealing with for an extended period of time. Before the start of the season? Um, that he's been dealing with it since before the start of the season. But that you would knew be about accurate. it before the start of the season? No, I didn't know. I did not know specifically some of the things I learned uh, until after the season had begun. Um, where do you see the program going from here? Do you think this is going to be a setback, or do you think they'll continue to play how they've been playing? Well, I think I think for this season, you know, again, we're we're obviously going to face some challenges um, in addition to the ones that we already knew about. Uh, I talked to the team uh, earlier today. Our coaches have talked to the team. They've already had position meetings. And they know that, and June did a great job in conveying to them that, you know, you know you're going to encounter adversity throughout your life and that this is a moment that's going to teach you how to deal with that. And you're going to either find a way to persevere and learn from it and grow from it and pull together you know, or you're not. And if you don't, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to get you again later on down the road. So it was very emotional today. They need some time. We all need some time to, to kind of process this. But I would expect that they'll pull together and play very hard for one another. Uh, I would expect that you'll see great effort and energy. And uh, as ter in terms of beyond this season, long term, again, I think I would say that we're very excited about the momentum as a university and as an athletics program that has been generated, uh, I think nationally, people feel really good about SMU. And so I, I feel like, again, because June uh, is departing with the program in much better shape than he found it, long term, I think we're well positioned for even greater success. I think, too, te teams kind of reflect, in many ways, the head coach. And uh, June had a, a very uh, developed system that required him to be able to think through it and think clearly about it and develop it. If you know Coach Mason, he's a little more emotional as most defensive coordinators are. And so I think you'll, those of you that know him will expect to see some of that reflected in the team in maybe different ways than it might have been with June because it is, has been my experience that, that teams in many ways do kind of show some of the personality of their head coach. And so I think you will see a little change there. It's just how how disappointing has this season been so far? I mean, have, have you been has it been lower than expectations or about where you think you should be with a young team? Well, um, haven't really given that much thought to be honest with you because again, this has been going on uh, for a period of time, and I've been really focused on Coach Jones and uh, and, and you know helping him sort through this so yeah, that's hard to say I mean I could go back to each of the two games and there's a handful of plays I think that could have could have gone differently and, and maybe we'd feel a little better but overall look we, our coaches know and coach Mason talked about it coach Jones talked about it um, we need to get better you know we need to improve we need to eliminate some of those mistakes and we need to make some of those plays and and we need to, to start doing that you know beginning this week and so we understand we have to get better, um, that the first two performances overall aren't up to our standards, and, uh, and I think and hope that they're taking that as a challenge and that they'll uh, step up to that challenge. Anything else? Thank you, guys. Aside from, uh, Sorry. aside from handling adversity and things like that, what was Coach Jones's overall message to the team today? Well, again, just very classy, very... Uh, positive 
very positive, didn't want it to be about him. Uh, wanted to make sure he understood that they needed to love each other and how important they, you know, that relationship was going to be now, even more important than it was before. Um, so just very positive, very upbeat, um, not about himself, uh, classy, you know, I, not to be repetitive, but just um, a great message for those young men to hear.